Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with the parmlet. That's right, I'm going to show you a brand new omelet technique I call the parmlet, which is actually short for parmesanlet, which is what I really wanted to call this, except I couldn't figure out how to spell it. But anyway, the word on the street is your omelet game could use some serious revolutionizing. And I really think this easy and incredibly delicious inside out omelet will do just that. So let's go ahead and get started by cracking a couple large eggs into a bowl. And no, I never removed those little white things. I don't even know what those are. And you know what? I don't want to know. That's one of the big problems with the internet. We all have to know what everything is now. That's not how it's supposed to work. And then what we'll do to those eggs is add a couple drops of water before we beat these up. That's just to thin this out ever so slightly. And people that study such things say it improves the texture. So we'll add about a quarter teaspoon of water. And then we'll take our fork and we'll bust those eggs right in the yolk. And we will work that over for about a half a minute until blended. And you don't want to necessarily beat these too long. They actually say it's a little better to undermix than overmix. Of course, having said that, I really don't think it matters too much. Unless you're severely under or over mixing. And why would you do that? Just do it like this. And once our eggs are set, we'll move on to the second most important ingredient. No, not the cheese. That was a terrible guess. The pan. Okay, for this revolutionary technique to work, you're going to need a nonstick pan, roughly 8 inches or so across. And what we'll do to prep this is drizzle in a little bit of olive oil, and then using a silicone brush or a fingertips brush, we will spread that evenly over the bottom of the pan. And yes, we're doing this to a cold pan. Okay, all this is going to happen before we head to the stove. And once our pan has been brushed with olive oil, we'll move on to the cheese. And yes, of course we're using real Parmesan. So you will need to find some Parmigiano Reggiano. If there was ever a video where you have to use the real stuff, it's this one. So please promise me you're not going to buy any of that pre-shredded stuff in the bag. Okay, you longtime viewers know that's one of my main missions in life. To make America great again, as I think we've become way too dependent on pre-grated cheese. And what we'll want to do is grate in a nice even layer, roughly about a half inch deep. And unfortunately, volume measurements are very hard to give for something like this. So what I'm going to do is give you an exact measurement on the blog post in grams. Oh, you heard me. It's going to be almost too accurate. So I will provide that data. Or you could just go by what your eyes are seeing right now. So we're going to go ahead and grate in just about that much Parmesan. And once that's set, we can head to the stove to start cooking our parmelet, which is going to be a two-step process. First, we have to caramelize and crisp up the cheese. And then we will cook the eggs. So we will place this over medium-high heat. And at first, not much is going to happen. But then you'll see that cheese slowly start to melt and go from kind of snowy white to sort of, I don't know, greasy translucent. And then eventually it will melt completely and start to cook. And once it starts to bubble like this, we really want to pay attention. All right, don't go anywhere. Don't answer the door. Don't change the TV channel. I know you hate that commercial. We all do. But do not move from the stove. Because as soon as this cheese starts to turn golden brown and starts to caramelize, that's when we're going to add our eggs. All right, so we'll keep an eye on it. We'll keep watching. And as soon as it turns from a light golden brown into a slightly darker golden brown, something very similar to what you see right here, we will go ahead and grab our eggs and pour them in and kind of tip the pan a little bit to make sure those are evenly distributed. And then what we'll do as soon as we dump those in is turn our heat down to low. And we will also at this point give it a little bit of seasoning, which I'm going to do with some freshly ground black pepper as well as a little touch of cayenne. And then we'll also add, as two very adorable bubbles form, a little pinch of kosher salt, but not too much. Remember, the cheese is also going to provide some salt. And then all we need to do to finish this off is simply cover it and let it cook on low for maybe another minute or so. It's going to be quick. Or until those eggs on the surface are just barely set. Or maybe slightly under. Okay, when we fold this over, it's going to continue to cook a little bit. So I let mine go for about a half a minute. And then I checked it out, and it was almost there, but just a touch soft. So I popped the cover on for another few seconds, until it looked a little something like this. And at that point, we'll go ahead and turn off the heat, and grab a spatula, and carefully fold this over. And sure, if you accidentally tear off a little piece, just hide it in the middle. No one will know. And we will go ahead and fold that over. And you really should be looking at the most beautiful golden brown omelet you've ever seen. Except all of a sudden that bubble does not look so adorable. and sort of messed up my perfect surface. Which is fine. It's just sort of hilarious because I made at least 35 of these. And not one had a bubble that messed up the surface. Until I filmed it and then it did. Well played universe. Well played. But anyway as soon as we flip that over we will transfer that to a plate. Where we'll serve that next to a grilled tomato. 
and the obligatory piece of toast. And of course, if there is a bubble that wrecks your surface and is really bothering you, you could just hide that with a little bit of fresh herb. And does it matter there's no oregano in the rest of the recipe? I don't care. I'm going to use it anyway. So I'm going to finish up with a little strategically placed herb. And that's it. My parmlet, or what I really wanted to call a parmesanlet, is done. And if you're unclear on what the advantage is between this and just mixing some cheese into eggs and making an omelet, when you brown parmesan in a pan, it kind of gets crispy. Oh, yeah. Fork don't lie. But anyway, when we brown parmesan, not only does it get a little crispy, but it also takes on a beautiful, rich, nutty flavor. But eggs, on the other hand, actually get dry and bitter when you brown them. So what we have here is that thin, crispy layer of caramelized parmesan protecting our moist, tender eggs. And it really works beautifully. So even though I cooked this more than I normally would have, because I'm moving the camera trying to get the perfect shots, and it was sort of cold and dry by the time I ate it, it still was spectacular. And yours, because you're going to go right from the pan to the plate, is going to be even more so. And by the way, if you're watching this and thinking, I would have tossed some sautéed mushrooms, or maybe diced peppers and ham into that before I folded it up, those are exactly the kind of things you should be thinking about. You are the Macklemore of adding more, so you change the omelet. Don't let the omelet change you. But anyway, that's it, what I'm calling a parmlet. Gorgeous, crispy, thin Parmesan layer on the outside, encasing perfect, moist, tender eggs inside. I really do love everything about this technique. So I really do hope you give this a try soon. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.